So let's go to Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 9. Before you go to Hebrews 1, 8, this is vitally important. Go to Psalm 102 real quickly. And then you can bring in Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 3 into the discussion. Now, if, if you can do me a favor, backtrack to Psalm 102. This psalm is ascribed to who? Read verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Okay, so it's, he's praying to Jehovah, not a creature. Now, can you read verse 12? But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. So clearly he's talking about Jehovah. Now, the key that's going to connect with Hebrews 1. Can you read 24 to 27? Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. This language cannot be ascribed to any creature except Jehovah. That's why he's addressing Jehovah. He says, you, Jehovah, laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. You will roll them up like a garment, but you remain the same, and your years never end. A clear affirmation to Jehovah being uncreated, almighty, creator, sustainer of all creation. You can't say this of a creature. So keep that in mind. Let's go to Hebrews I understand 1. This about Yahweh. Say it again. I understand that is about Yahweh. Okay, well, because that's the relevant to Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12, because now the Father ascribes it to the Son in Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. There is no way possible to escape contextually, exegetically, that the Father speaking to the Son glorifies the Son and praises the Son in the words of Psalm 102, identifying the Son as the Lord, who at the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, saying, you created the heavens with your hands, you remain the same, and you roll them up, and your years never, years never end. According to you, that can't possibly be true, because Jesus is not Jehovah, who was there, who created all things with the Father and the Spirit. But Hebrews says exactly that's who Jesus is. No, that's how you're misinterpreting Hebrews. Show me how. I'm waiting. So Psalm 102 has nothing to do with the father talking to his son or talking about his son. It is a prayer of an afflicted man who's praying to Father Yahweh. No, that's not what Hebrews said. It said this is addressing the son. We just read it. No, verse that's eight. verse 8 is addressing the son. There is eight, no nine. disconnect. S sir, there's nothing in the Greek or the context that disconnects the conversation of 10 to verse 8, it's conjunctive, not disjunctive. It's continuing the conversation that the Father is having about and to the Son. Prove exegetically that the person being addressed is not the Son. Don't assume it, prove it. Because from verse 8, in fact, from verse 5, all the way 14, it's the Father speaking to the Son about the Son. The referent doesn't change. Okay, scroll up to like verse 5, five. maybe. Yep, make my case for me, my friend. All right, so starting in verse 5, yeah, all the way to Yahweh starts talking about his son or about his son. Yep. So this is a quote from Psalm 2 7. Yep, and 2 Samuel 7 14, 1 Chronicles 17 13. And then he's going to cite Psalm 104 4. Then he's going to cite Hebrews 1. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 32 43. I know, but you're making my case because he's talking okay, about. So he's, cite he's citing all these verses in which the Father Yahweh is talking to his son or about his son yep but then you come to verse 10 then you come to verse 10 which is from psalm 102 and it's totally changes from nope. yahweh no. talking okay. about his son or to his son to some afflicted man talking no, to yahweh that's not what happens there that's there's no change especially if you go to 13 it's the same father speaking to the son you have to disconnect it because it doesn't agree with your theology which means you need to change your theology there is no disconnect the only person being addressed in the context is the son by the father to contrast them to creation like angels. Sorry, it doesn't work. I know you want it to that way, but we can't make the Bible agree with our traditions. It's clearly the father speaking to the son, applying the words of the psalmist to the son, 
describing the Son as the uncreated, eternal creator and sustainer of all creation. See, that's why I'm a Trinitarian, which is why you need to be, because I don't have to ignore and explain away passages to hold my position. Well, so I'm still waiting. Give me the proof that the speaker changes and the reference changes when there is no change in the referent and the speaker from verse 5 to 13. So up to verse up to verse 9, Yahweh is glorifying his son and showing how he's much greater than angels and so forth. And then the writer and, of Hebrews. The word talks, and means the conversation continues. And is conjunctive, not disjunctive. It says, and further. And you, uh, Yahweh. And who's the Yahweh there? The Father. No. So the, so the writer of Hebrews the is, functions here because we're you're you're really trying hard to ignore the end the end means and further it's conjunctive not disjunctive prove to me that now the referent has changed when from verses 5 to 9 and 13 it's all about the son being dressed by the father it doesn't work i'm sorry well i i, I got the feeling i can't prove anything to you <laughs> no it's uh, listen uh, our duty your duty if you fear the lord like you say yahweh yeshua is to be faithful to scripture and let the scripture speak and not impose our tradition into it. Of course, I'm not going to simply agree with you because you don't want the text to confirm what you have come to believe. Neither should you let me get away with something that's not scriptural. But so far, you've made assertions but haven't proved it. I'm waiting for the exegetical contextual proof where the referent changes when from verse 5 to 13, it's the Father speaking to the Son about the Son, and there's no change in the referent. You have to change the referent because you cannot accept Jesus being Yahweh in the flesh. This is why we invite you to change your position and accept verse 10, Verses 10 through 12 change it. Prove because, it. Because Psalm 102 proves that it's not the Father talking to the Son. It proves that there, the psalmist's words are being taken by the Father and applied to Jesus, just like Hebrews 1 5, that second citation where it says, I will be his father, he'll be my son, that's about Solomon. According to you, that means the father's not talking about Jesus, he's talking about Solomon, because in its context, it's about Solomon. You see your logic? That doesn't work. In that Hebrews 1 5, the second citation, I will be a father to him, he'll be a son to me. It is a verbatim citation of 2 Samuel 7 14, found also in 1 Chronicles. 1713, which is about Solomon, now applied to the Son. According to your understanding, since this was applied to Solomon, it can't be about Jesus, because that's your argument about the Psalm. Well, the Psalm is, it's a human crying out to, the, to Yahweh, the Father, therefore it can't be applied to the Son. Hebrews 1 says, I don't agree with your interpretation. A passage that can be addressing Solomon can be applied to the Son, so the Psalmist praying to Yahweh can be applied to the Son as well. So Hebrews doesn't agree with your tradition. Okay, I see what you're saying there. What do you do with verse 6, though? Do you know where that citation, let all God's angels worship him, comes from? Well, it's debatable, but... Okay, but which two do they debate? Neither of which helps your case, because both of which is referring to angels worshiping Yahweh, not a creature. Which two passages do Bible expositors say that Hebrews 1.6 may be possibly referring to? I know them, but I want to see if you... You've done something and you you know the answer. What is it? Do you know? Well, is that them that we just showed? No, in Hebrews 1 6, no. It says, oh, no. and again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. This verse is citing either Deuteronomy 32 43, the Dead Sea Scrolls version, or the Greek version, or Psalm 97 7, the Greek version, both of which is angels being commanded to worship Yahweh God, not a creature. Why is it applied to the Son if he's not Yahweh? Okay, I'll have to look those up. Yeah, well, can you show him the ESV? Because ESV in Deuteronomy 32, 43 does translate from the Dead Sea Scrolls, which has that clause found in the Greek version, not the later Masoretic text. Let's see who the angels are being commanded to worship. Rejoice with him, O heavens, bow down to him, all gods, for he avenges the blood of his children and takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his people's land. Reread the first part again so we can see who's being commanded to do what. 
Rejoice with him, O heavens, bow down to him, all gods. Now that phrase is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls Hebrew version of Deuteronomy, which confirms the reading found in the Greek version. But the Greek version, if you look it up, Psalm 96, 7 in the Greek. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 32, 43 in the Greek. I'm thinking Psalm, I apologize. Deuteronomy 32, 43 in the Greek. I threw the Greek version to see this is possibly where Hebrews is quoting from. If not, the other one will go to. Yeah, here it is. Um, this is the SBL text. Or no, this is two again. Sorry. The Greek version, yeah? Yeah. It says, uh, Pontes Angeloi Theu. Pontes Angeloi Theu means all the angels of God do what? You see the, f the verbal form of proskeneo, right? Because it goes on to say, Ke proskunesetosen auto wiu theu. Worship him, all you sons of God. You see it? And I can give you an English translation so he doesn't think we're making it up. There the angels of God are equated with the sons of God as worshiping Yahweh in the context. Do you see that? Show me the English version. Yes, I'll get you the English version. Hold on, let me get it for you. Here it is. Here's the link. If you click on it, brother, and you go down to Deuteronomy 3243, the translation's the left and the Greek is on the right. Watch here whom the angels are being commanded to worship. Rejoice ye heavens with him and let all the angels of God worship him. Mm -hmm. Worship him, right? So in the context, the angels of God are not worshiping a creature. It's Yahweh, right? You guys see that in the context, it's Yahweh that all the angels are worshiping. I got to read the context here. Oh, sure. Yeah, let him see it. Let him look at it so you can confirm. It's not a creature being commanded, or angels commanded to worship. It's Yahweh, the creator, being worshiped by all the angels. And then we're going to look at the alternate, Psalm 96, 7. But I want him to confirm, nowhere in that context is there someone other than Yahweh God being commanded or being worshipped by the angels. Angels being commanded to worship Yahweh. May the Lord save me from here. So once you confirm it, John, let me know so we can go to Psalm 96, verse 7. I need to see the what I was reading. Okay, oh, sorry. Um, where do you, yeah, you want to be? Just tell again. me. Yeah, the Greek. Just give him, let him read from 39 to 43 of the Greek if he wants to see it. No, not the Greek. I want to see the English translation the English, of the yeah, Greek. That's what I meant. Go to the Aleppo, which is the English translation of the Greek version, and he can read to the left. Let him read from 39. Read from 39. It's all Yahweh, all the way to down. You'll see from 39. Behold, okay, behold that I am, and there is no God beside me. I kill, and I will make to live. I will smite, and I will heal, and there is none who shall deliver out of my hands. For I will lift up my hand to heaven and swear by my right hand, and I will say, I live forever. For I will sharpen my sword like lightning, and my hand shall take hold of judgment, and I will render judgment to my enemies and will recompense them that hate me. I will make my weapons drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. It shall glut itself with the blood of the wounded, and from the captivity of the heads of their enemies that rule over them, Rejoice, ye heavens, with him, and let all the angels of God worship him. Keep going, reading. Keep going. He sees who it is. Yeah. Keep going a little more. Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people, and let all the sons of God strengthen themselves in him, for he will avenge the blood of his sons, and he will render vengeance and recompense justice to his enemies, and will reward them that hate him, and the Lord shall purge the land of his people. Is it clear it's Yahweh here, or no? Well, it seems to change from I to him. Yeah, because Yahweh is saying something, and now Moses is now commanding the angelic host and the people to worship the Lord, who had just got done speaking. That happens often, you know this, where Yahweh will speak, and then when he finishes, then Moses or the prophet steps in by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and then now exhorts, now all of you, worship him, he who fights for us, who's delivered us, who will make atonement for the land. But there's no one else in the context that's being worshipped by the angels look at it there's no one else it's the lord so once you see that i can show you the now psalm 96 7 because that may be the other passage that hebrews 1 is citing but one thing i want you to note john it says the lord will purge the land of his people meaning he's going to purge and cleanse his people who are defiling the land you see it right there the lord not a creature in hebrew it's yahweh will purge because i want you to keep that in mind the lord will purge if you're ready to go Psalm 96, let me know. The Greek Go version. Okay, now, stick with the Greek version, Scott, because in the Greek version, meaning English translation, Greek version, this link, Psalm 97.7 in the Greek is Psalm 96.7, and they provide the translation. 
And then you can show them the Hebrew original. Psalm 96, verse 7. Let all that worship graven images be a saint ashamed who boast of their idols. Worship him, all ye angels. There is no one other than Yahweh in the context who is being worshipped by the angels. Neither Deuteronomy 32 nor Psalm is referring to angels worshipping a creature. None. Hebrews 1.6 is citing this. Not only does it cite it, but it says in Hebrews 1.3 that Jesus made purification, purged, made a purging of sins. The very same thing that Deuteronomy 32 says the Lord would do, Yahweh would do. Since you don't believe Jesus is Yahweh, he's Yeshua, his human represent, representative. Again, I'm trying to figure out why in Hebrews 1, here's my question, does the author, tradition says it was Paul, it's debated by scholars today, cite passages where Yahweh is being worshipped, not a creature, Yahweh is being worshipped by all angels, and where Yahweh is identified as the unchanging, eternal creator and sustainer of all things, and applies them to the Son, and on top of that, he has the Father applying it to the Son, if your position is right. Okay, noted. I'll look into that. Good. I like that. I like that about that. John, that really blesses my heart that you're not just here to, like, argue, but you want to learn. Hey, praise God for that. May God guide us on our journey.